Clear. Right there. Calm. Uh, wow. Man. The the the, the, the the systematic programming. Right? So that when you close your eyes and you think about the Lord, right? If you don't have the proper understanding, you see this guy. Mm. This guy mm. who probably didn't allegedly didn't like 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 women. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then we we have a we have a, a clear depiction of what our Lord looked like, right? Uh. So get that revelations, young lion one and seventeen. All right. We got our bro, big bro Cliff, uh from St. Louis, man. Soldier, another soldier out there for fire of God in St. Louis, man. Uh, we got him in the in the back chat, man. Lord willing, if he got some any good precepts, man, go ahead and go ahead and put it in there, man. You know, because we want we want to we want to edify our people tonight, man. Right? That's this right. Lesson, right? Uh, with fire of God from Jacksonville, the, our big brother uh, Ash, right? Commanding general of this camp, right? You know, humble yeah, brother. Right. Mm -hmm. right? That's Keep right. Keep doing this thing already, but this is our first one here. But again, let's get back on topic. I just wanted to give a shout out to our brother. You know how we do. That's right. <laughs> All right? Mm -hmm. Hey, but let's get back on the topic, right? Because again, we see that they laid open the book of our law, wherein the heathen, they sought to paint their own images, man. This is the Greeks. This is Esau. This is the so-called hmm. white man. Hmm. All right. Mm. When our scriptures tell us, right, what our Lord looked like, right? So read on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. His hair on his face, his beard was all white, right? Like, like if I had an all white beard, I got a slightly white beard. Mm -hmm. Our elder uh, brother, not saying like he's a, a elder in age 60 plus, so like, yeah, I don't want anybody to think that, but Right, our senior, our, our older brother, he got more gray in his beard than, than me. That's, that's uh, that signifies that wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. But Yahweh Shah, his beard was all gray. So you imagine how much wisdom he had. And what else was all gray? Read on. As white as snow, and his as eyes. White as snow. Mm -hmm. His hair was as hairs on his head, and the top of his head was as white as snow, right? Read on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes was as a flame of fire. Right? Read on. And his feet like unto fine bread. And his feet like unto what? And his feet like unto fine brass. Like under fine brass. Everybody know brass is brown. Right? But we can play that game. Right? They'd be like, oh, no, brass is not always. All right. Read on. <laughs> as if they burned in a furnace. As if it burned in a furnace. You put anything in a fire, what's going to happen to it? It's getting burned. It's going to turn what color? It's, it's going to black. Black, <laughs> dark, right? <laughs> Am I right? So. Huh. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, so, I mean... Our people got to understand that the images that you see in the Christian church, that's not what your Lord looked like. All right. And we got to go with thus saith Yahweh, right? So, hey, Shakar, get uh, 1 John chapter 5, right? Last precept, and then we're going to get back to that article. Chapter 5 and verse 10. Chapter Tell me, why don't you Right. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 10, right? Because, again, we just got the description of our Lord, right? From our one of our, our holy uh, prophets, which holy meaning separate, right? When our holy prophets, John the Revelator, all right? Yeah. He gave you a description of what our Lord looked like. And this is also John the Revelator right here. Listen to what he said right here in 1 John 5 and 10, Right? For anybody who want to scoff, right? Hey, and one of these days, we're going to open up the smoke. So if the scoffer want to come up, right, then, then come up and we can talk about it. Definitely need to talk about it. Definitely talk about it. If you if you're a Christian and you're watching this and you don't agree, right, then, then come on and talk about it, right? Or maybe you're a, 
you would know you're an Israelite. You may be a Hebrew Israelite Christian. You want to talk about it? We could talk about it. It's not a problem. All right. If you got that first John uh, one and five, go ahead and get that. I might have first to... John. Yeah, first go ahead. John. You say first John one and five, right? Uh, five and oh. Salakia, five and ten. First John five and ten. He that believeth on the Son of the Living Power mm -hmm. has the witness in himself. That's right. He that believeth not in the living power has made him a liar. Right. So you want you gonna believe you don't believe in the living power and his son, right? You making them you making them liars, right? But we believe we believe every word like our Lord said, every word that proceeded out of the mouth, right? We uh -huh. talk, yeah. Our Lord said he came in the volume of the book. All right. Read on. Because he believeth not in the record that because the living he believeth not in the what? Because he believeth not in the record. Or he Salaki, he believeth not the record. He believeth not the record. The record is the scriptures. Right? And the, and part of that record is what John the Rev, how John the Revelator described our Lord. So you got to believe the record. Read on. That the living power gave of his son. That the living power, these words inspired by Yahweh, that's the record that Yahweh gave of his son. That he was a, a, a melanated, black, powerful man. That's right. All right? Not some pale-faced Edomite. Yeah. All right? With recessive Not some eyes. Dog. <laughs> Not some dog, Okay. Because, by the way, the, the, the outside is for the dogs. All you other nations, y'all the dogs. All right? Hey, man, you might, not like, you might not like it, but it's the truth. All right? Truth hurts. For Israel, man. Hey, we gonna, the, the Lord said if we overcome that, we was going to get power over you nations, by the way. Right? But that's a different subject. We ain't going to get into that right now. Right? That's for another day. We'll talk about, we'll see. I wonder how many, see, it's a lot of. It's a lot of Christians. See, they don't want power over the nations, right? Especially our people, right? They want to forgive their, their, their slave master, man. But we're not with that. We're not them type of bruise. All right. We not, we ain't gonna for, we ain't gonna just forget, forget, and forgive. We ain't gonna forgive, and we damn sure not gonna forget. Hmm. All right. So hey, let, I'm gonna uh we're gonna get back to this article. We might have to uh uh close, I'm probably gonna close this out. Uh, everybody at the hour mark. We might even have to come back for a part two. Yeah, for sure. All right. Con. Con. So let's uh let's go for for a little bit more. We'll get a little bit more into this article and then we'll probably come back for a part two and uh close it out for the people. All right. So All I'm right. sharing my screen. And uh so we already talked about uh, this picture right here that this is not what your Lord looked like. So people get this image out your head. All right. Con. So let's listen, listen to what it says. It says, the gospel of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ is our Heavenly Father's plan for the happiness and salvation of his children. That's true. But who's his children, right? <laughs> <laughs> we already read that, didn't we? <laughs> right? His children are the children of Israel. All right? Con. Not, not for God so loved the world. Okay? That's right. Right. Yeah, God did so for love the world, the world of Israel. Right? All right? Salvation for his children. It is called the gospel of Jesus Christ because of the atonement of Jesus Christ. Right? So what does the word uh, atonement mean? Real quick. All right? Let's look that word up. All right, let's just look that up. So atonement is reparation for a wrong or injury. So that's what that word means. It's a reparation for a wrong or injury. Well, what yeah. wrong or injury did the whole world do to him? They didn't. The only people who he ever gave his law to was Israel, and they and them the ones who they the ones who transgressed it, right? Right? When did he ever give his laws to anybody else? Somebody uh get that precept for me. Get Psalms. No, get Amos, right? Get Amos 3 and 1. 
right? The, uh, the again, atonement is for the reparation for a wrong or injury. All right? We're the ones who 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 who, who wronged the most high Yahweh and had a grievous wound, right? Uh -huh. That could we had a wound that couldn't be repaired, and only the blood of of uh, of, of the Son of Power, right, could could do that mm. for us, right? For all of the sins, man, for us who were under the first uh testimony, right, or the first testament, right? That's what your dear brother uh, brother Paul wrote. That he shed his blood for them. All right? To make atonement for them. For their sins. Right? Mm. All right? So uh, when you got that, read that. Whoever got chapter, that, Amos 3. Amos chapter 3 and 1. Mm. Hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Yashrayah, against the whole families which I have brought upon brought up from the land of egypt mm -hmm. saying right you only have i known saying you only have i known right read on of all the families of the earth so the families would be considered his children right mm -hmm. right oh right now watch this right the families would be considered his children right the salvation for his children but he said that the only family, his children, that he ever known was who? Israel. Israel. Wow. Boy, you, you the Christian church, man, y'all better get it together. Y'all need to <laughs> come out of that madness. They failed you. No cap. The Reverend Rev has failed you, man. Hmm. All right. It, when I came to the truth, it made me mad how hard they was lying to Christianity. Like, dang. I'm telling you, right? Oh, hold on. We got a special guest. I got to pause. We got the big homie brother Ash in here. Oh, oh man. Hold on. Lord willing, he, Lord willing, he come back and get on with us. Right? All praises. Right? I don't know what happened to him. Uh, I lost him. But Lord willing, he come back. But again right that 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 make you mad when you find out about all of the lies right for sure right, right? the fact that they try to keep you away from the laws too like hey talk about a young line they tell you that we don't got to keep the laws but our lord and savior said that it's every word that proceeded out of the mouth of yahweh right mm -hmm. right well while i'm, I'm a lord willing our brother I'll come back i'm gonna get back to this article a little bit more, a little bit more, all right? So, right, again, uh, it is called the gospel because of the atonement, and we know that that atonement can only be for Israel. Of Christ is central to this plan, which it is, right? To give repentance and remission of sins for who? For Israel, right? Get uh, a young lion, get Acts 5 and 29. Right, according to his plan, our heavenly father sent his son, uh, who the world newly calls Jesus Christ, into the world to show us how to live a live a meaningful and happy lives. Right, and live a meaningful. No, he didn't. He showed you that he came to be the perfect example, not to show you how to live a meaningful and happy life. Life. No, he came to show you how to live a lost that. Law, Statutes, and Commandments. All right. Hey, hold on one second. Let me stop my share. Let's bring our let's bring our big bring, big homie on. Big bro. Hey, Shalom, big bro. Shalom, Shalom, okay. Hey, Ock, I think you got your 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 mic uh, silenced, Ock. Calm. Well, Lord willing, I hope he can. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, you said that was Acts 5 and what? Oh, uh, that's Acts 5. Hey, Y'all hear me? Yeah, 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 we got you Shalak. now. Yeah. Uh, Shalaki, Shalaki. Look. Hey, Shalawam, Mark. Shalawam, Yahweh, Shim Yahweh, Shai, Barak, A little technical difficulties on this end. Hey, all praises, all praises. 
Hey, we're glad to we're glad to have you, uh, my brother. You know. Hey, of oh, course. This is this is great. This is a vision coming into fruition. This is good. Hey, hey, absolutely, absolutely. And um, you know, we're glad, man, that you took the time to to jump on this with us. Our first uh first live stream for the Jacksonville camp. Um, okay. y'all going in. So all uh, praises, yeah. So you see the topic, Ak, Anything uh, you want to add to it, to edify the people? Of course, man, it'd be much appreciated. I'm trying to catch up. I'm trying to catch up. And what's the uh, what's the last Con. thing y'all was going into? Con. What so, aspect of it? We were. Uh, I was going into this article, man, and we were talking about. Uh, so let me bring it back up, so uh, again everybody can see it. Right. Going into this article, right? You can see that, right? I can see it a little bit. I can't Con. really see the lettering or nothing like that. I'm doing it on my phone. Con, con, all praises. But what it says is, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? So we analyze in this because this is from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This is a Christian organization, and this is what they say the gospel is. So we want to put it under scrutiny uh, of the Bible, which they claim to believe in. Am I right, my brother? Con, con. Con. Every time. Right. So when we started out, we were like, look, this says, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? The first thing is, was his name actually Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, it, it's crazy because even if we don't delve into that aspect of it, even if we don't delve into, you know, how to really say his name, if we don't pretend like these religions is based off the Bible, which they loosely based off the Bible. Right. The reason that the reason that they have to keep you out that Old Testament so-called is because the doctrine can't stand if, if you're going to go in based off of what's in the entirety of the book. I heard you talk about that. Right. We're supposed to believe in the whole thing. Why? Right. Who can give me um Acts one and five? Con, I and somebody you. else give me Deuteronomy thirty. Con. I'm getting Acts one and five. A young lion get Deuteronomy uh four. Yeah, Deuteronomy the thirtieth chapter from the top. But I want that Acts one and five first. Con, I got you. Uh, this is the book of Acts. Chapter 1 and verse 5, and it reads, For John, Salakia, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Salakia, so start up um, start up a verse above that. Uh, verse, four. You want verse, verse 4. Yeah, I want, um, are thou come to restore the kingdom oh, of Israel? Con, con, I got you. Con, con, con. Um, this is uh, the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 6. And uh, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So the point of it is we got to start to ask ourselves, why would somebody that believes on Christ ask him something like that? And it's because of prophecy. You know what I'm saying? The prophecy stated that he would die for Israel. The prophecy stated that, you know, he was going to come and, and rule the kingdom of Israel. The prophecy says that he's going to subdue these other nations. The prophecy said he's going to trample Edom. Before we get Deuteronomy, um, the 30th chapter, somebody let me get Numbers 24. Numbers 24, start at verse 17. Come on. Like when we talk about gospel, you know, this is when visions of the gospel started to be propagated and prophesied mm -hmm. all the way back in the beginning of the book. Now, if we don't believe in the volume of the book, then we're going to miss right. a step. What these God. brothers did was God. they missed a step. <laughs> God. And we were no, just talking about that uh, through the spirit that that's what our Lord said. He came in the volume of the book and we got to believe the record. God, I right. got that. You want numbers 24 and what? 17. You got it, mm -hmm. Chicago? Yeah, number, number 24, 17. Con. Con. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not near. Mm -hmm. There shall come a star out of Jacob and a scepter that shall rise out of Yashreel 
and Shah Smite. Right oh, oh, there, oh, there. So a scepter shall rise out of Israel. They knew rulership was going to rise out of Israel. A star was going to rise out of Jacob. The three wise men, they knew about the star that was going to come out. But now these brothers are waiting for the scepter to rise out of Israel. They're waiting for that dominion. Keep going. A star out of Jacob and a scepter shall ride out, shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab. Did that happen yet? Oh, didn't, on, didn't, didn't, on, didn't know Moabites get smitten by Hamashiach <laughs> Yahweh side of the world causes Jesus Christ. Right. That did not occur. So there's still some good news left to occur on the earth, right? But this is a part of those brothers waiting for the kingdom of Israel to be restored. Keep going. And destroy all the children of Sheth. That word Sheth right there, that's talking about Seth, all the children of Seth. So you had Cain, you had Abel. And then after uh, Abel, you had Seth to, to replace him. So it's saying he's going to destroy all the children that come out of Seth. That means all the nations got to get licked. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. Wow, beautiful. And and Edom shall be a possession. Who shall be a possession? Edom. Edom shall be a possession. Go ahead. Zaire also shall be a possession for his enemies. So this says Seir. So Seir is the mount that, that Edom went on to possess when they killed the Horites. Right? Con and they took that land over when they first went conquesting. So we're going to take their whole land over and we're going to own them. Keep reading. Con and Yashrael shall do valiantly. We're going to do valiantly. It's going to be warfare that's had. And we're going to be the ones that come out on top with Yahweh's side at the head. Talk hey, about so it. And can I read that Acts 1 again to, just to, to help make that point, right? Because, God. <laughs> because when did, like the like our big bro, our big brother is bringing out, when did this happen, right? Right? When did we get the when did we get to possess Edom and when did Israel do violent violently? So these brothers knew that this thing these things had to happen, right? So let me read uh, what our brother uh brother asked me to bring out. This is Acts chapter one again in verse six. And when when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, that's talking about Yahweh Shah, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again? The kingdom of Israel. Mm -hmm. huh. So, so the people that believed on Yahweh Shai, they didn't just believe that he was there in the moment. You know what I'm saying? They believed that he was there and that there were certain things that he was going to bring about. Right? You deal with Caiaphas, the high priest. You know right. what I'm saying? He knew that Hamashiach Yahweh Shai had to die for the whole nation. But these are things that we'll completely miss if we come up under Christianity pretending like they're about the volume of the book, the whole book alludes to Christ, this and that, but they ignore all these uh, all these aspects of him that the people who really believed on him did not ignore, right? But keep reading that in Numbers 24. Numbers 24, verse 19. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Mm -hmm. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perished forever. Come on, pause right there. So that's all good right there. Somebody hold uh, Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. But when you deal with that, that's talking about Amalek was the not the first nation to exist. But he was the top dog of the nations. But he's going to perish forever from the earth. He's not going to be somebody to be remembered no more. Not nobody to call shots no more. He's going to be over with when Yahweh Shai comes back. That last part where it talks about him destroying uh, who, who remaineth of the city. That's going into what Isaiah the 63rd chapter is talking about. And what oh, the book God. of Revelation is talking about when it says, um, gather unto me the cluster of the vine. And him trampling it till the till the blood reaches the horse's bridle. So this is from this is from the beginning unto Revelations. And we see that Israel is set to be put back on top. But here's right. the here's the main point. Hold on, hold on real quick. Put y'all on hold. Come, come. Yeah, but that's the point. Like the brother was bringing out in the uh, 
in uh, Isaiah 63, it says that it's like the Lord, like he, he, he treaded the wine press alone, right? And that ain't grape juice on his garments. Mm. <laughs> All right? Uh, we, no grapes. We ain't talking about no Welches. No. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But but this is this is what's so crazy about it. Like the the, the Christian, the, the nonsense that come out the Christian church, they'll tell you that you know the uh, the new covenant started when Christ died on the cross and that the old covenant was done away with then. But Daniel the ninth chapter, which is really more prophecy about Yahweh Shai tell you that he's gonna die. Right. Then Titus Vespasian is going to come and destroy the temple. The sacrifice is going to be on pause and all this is going to happen so that the old covenant is confirmed That's by the right. curses of Deuteronomy. Right. So 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 Christ dying is actually a sign that we still in the old covenant. The temple being destroyed is still a sign that we still in the old covenant. Right. These things they want you to ignore. This is why they got to tell you, don't don't read the, the beginning of the book. You know, it's all about <laughs> the New Testament, even though, right. according to them, the whole book is prophesying about Christ. Who got that uh, Deuteronomy 30? Hey, come uh, hey, and I'm just pull it up. I'm, I'm pulling it up on the screen, too, just to edify uh, the nation, too, so that they can see it. All praises. 30, all praises. What? Um, 30 and 1 through 7. Right, and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee. The blessing and the curse. So we just talked about Daniel the ninth chapter. You know, we talk about how Daniel nine is going to occur and that how the, the, the covenant is going to be confirmed for one week. What this is dealing with is from 63 to 70 AD, that time period. Right. Keep going. Which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations. Now we calling them to mind among all nations. This is this is gospel right here. <laughs> right? Well, this is this is this is gospel written into the covenant. The clause saying that look, if you do go off, this is how you get back on. And this is why we even have a message of any gospel to begin with, because it's a promise of the most high. Right. Go ahead. Whether the Lord thy God has driven me. The wherever we at. Mm-hmm. And shout. And shall return unto the Lord thy God, and repent. shall obey his voice according to all that command thee this day. So all repent, right. for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? That's the message right. that John the Baptist was bringing forth before Christ hit the scene. Go ahead. Thou and thy children, with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, mm -hmm. that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. So we, so we want God to, uh, we want God to end our captivity. If we do it from the Christian stance, we're not going to get that, that mercy, right? We're not going to get that compassion because they teach you to turn to God half-heartedly. You don't got to keep all the commandments. The, the book of Moses is done away with, despite what Nehemiah tells us about how you can't really separate the, the book of the law of God from the book of Moses and how it's one and the same. Keep going. And then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nation, whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee. Salvation. Go ahead. God. If any of thine be driven out into the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee. Mm hmm and from this will he fetch thee, and the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. Into the land which thy fathers possessed. Now, another way to look at this is when did this happen to them fake Jews? You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. They they went into their captivity to the uh, Germans calling themselves Jews to begin with. Uh -huh. Right? And it was, what was you going to say? Hey, I was going to say I got a precept on that too. Con, bring that dagger. Con, con. This is uh, Ezekiel. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna pull it up right here. This is Ezekiel 36 and five. Uh, Ezekiel 36 and five. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, power. Surely, in the fire of my jealousy, have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. Mm. 
and against all Idumia, that's Esau, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their hearts, with the spiteful minds to cast out for a prey. Mm. All right. Come. So Bring that out. That's what they did, man. They they thieves, man. And like the brother was saying, the prophecy doesn't fit them. You see what I'm saying? Uh, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, right? When did that happen to them? Right? Uh, no, it never did. happened to them. But they did. But they did this right here, right? I do me what they appointed the Most High Yahweh's land into their possession. That's the land of Israel. That's that pit in Second Ezra that. Yahweh said the one pit that he chose. Con. That's all okay. I got. No, that's good. That's good. What's so crazy is how they tell you don't look at the Old Testament, look at the New Testament, and they skip right over Luke 21, 24, that oh. affirms that the Gentiles is going to be controlling our territory. And right now they got our land divided into quarters um, between different religions. You got the Muslim, you got the Christian, right? You got the fake Jews. And then I forgot what the other part of it. I think it's the Armenian quarter or some bullshit like that. So like you're on the language. But uh, finish that out in Deuteronomy 30. Out. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies. What's going to happen? And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon curses thy upon enemies. enemies. All these curses upon our enemies. So we're going to get above them very high like we're supposed to be in the first place. And they're going to get below us very low. We're going to impoverish them. You know what I'm saying? As we rebuild in the desolate places, we're going to be impoverishing them. We're going to be putting people in their place. And that's good news to me. Yeah, okay. and that's the gospel right there. Absolutely. That's the gospel right there. Uh, hey, hey, I'm going to know today. Bro, Ooh, appreciate that. That's fire, Ock. So, look, a little OT gospel. You know what I'm saying? That's that's all I had. I'm just listening to you, brothers. Going in, man. Y'all doing a good work. Con, con, appreciate that. We actually, um, we probably gonna close it out because I really only wanted to go like an hour a top, like an hour and fifteen minutes. So we are gonna close it out in a in a second, um, and we are gonna come back for a part two later this week, man, and finish edifying the people. We are gonna get back into that. We are gonna finish the scrutiny uh, on this article, right? Because, again, we stopped at the point where it talked about basically about the atonement. Who's the uh, atonement for? And what is a, what does atonement mean? Right? Oh, wait. Who could get that? Um, it's Hebrews 9 and 16, I believe. Come. Real quick. I'm gonna get shot. And while, he, I, while whoever's getting that, getting that, I'm going to read again the definition of atonement is reparation for a wrong or for a injury. Right? Right in a in a religious context, I'm gonna read on reparation of uh, reparation for sins. Okay, and the reconciliation of God, as they say, to humankind through Jesus Christ, but it's not to humankind; it's to Israel, right? Because He's a right. prince and a savior for Israel. Con, so that's all I got on that. I right, go ahead, brother. Okay, and it's it's nine and fifteen, not sixteen. So lucky. Hebrews 9 and 15. God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that mm. by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. Under they, what? Under the First Testament? Them who were under the First mm. That's beautiful, I, I want to start that back from the top again. If I can, I'm going to go ahead and start that over. God. And for this call, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first book, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Boom. So them that are called, so the under the first testament and them that are called, we the one that is called. Through Isaac shall I see be called. We gotta stop. Letting these Christians play these little games, man. They use their little fancy words mm -hmm. <laughs> and think they're gonna pull the wool over brother's eye. And it just ain't so. That time is over with. I got a precept. I got a precept, man. Whenever y'all got time, it's powerful too. Con, 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 con. Hey, Ark, um, 
we go, hey, well, yeah, uh, what, you, what precept you got? Uh, we're going to get that precept. Uh, I got one last precept that I'm going to bring out just to close it out. Uh, and then uh, we'll let our big, our big brother, Ash, if he got anything, uh, officially close us out. I'm about to uh, dip right now. I'm actually on the clock. <laughs> ka, 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 hey. Hey. All right, hey. Well, hey, brother. Hey, call all y'all by Shimmy Awasha. Hey, Baraka Thai, brother Ash. Hey, and uh, Shalawam. Shalawam, bro. Shalawam, bro. Con. Con. All right, so, um, yeah, like, we uh, we about to close it out. We're going to come back. Uh, We're going to come back for a part two. Uh, We're going to finish the, the, the scrutiny on uh on what the gospel is according to the the uh <laughs> the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints all right we're gonna finish that so uh go ahead i can uh bring out bring out real quick barbecue shot what you got i'm bringing this precept up out because it's in line with the doctrine and how they was like uh um it's been done away we ain't supposed to keep it or whatnot you know what i'm saying but we knowing that us not keeping the us not keeping the, the laws is what's keeping us from rising as a nation. That's right. So or I, I want you to check out something. So so I got I got the precept in here and then I got something in the in the theopedia that's gonna, you know, complement. So huh. in Revelation so in Revelation chapter two, verse fifteen. Revelation oh. two and fifteen. Right. Okay. But I'm going to start at 14, though. Come bring it out. It, it says, uh, but I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, of, of Balaam, oh, who Balaam. taught Balaam Come. to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel mm. to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Mm-hmm. So has I, so has thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Mm-hmm. Okay, now what's the doctrine of the Nicolaitans? Right, mm-hmm. you go over here to Theopedia, and this is what the doctrine of Nicolaitans is. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans appears to have been a form of Antoni Antoninianism which makes the fatal mistake that man can freely partake in sin because mm-hmm. the law of the living power is no longer binding. Oh, Con. right. Con. They, that's what these Christians think. That's Con. why they crucify our Lord afresh, right? Because they tell you he died for your, for your sins. Now you can do whatever you want. All you got to do is say, pray to Jesus to forgive you. And you're good, right? But watch this. This we're gonna close out on this. Hey, young lion, get uh second Timothy chapter three and start at verse one. And we're gonna close out on this right here. What's that precept again? Uh uh, second Timothy chapter three and verse one. And this go right along with what you just read about the doctrine of do as thou will. And that's the hmm. modern day doctrine of a guy like I ain't gonna call his name, you know, <laughs> but he's a he's a he's a verse what. Uh, Second Timothy three. Oh, three. three, 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 right? But there's a guy out there who's a, a a big time rapper, right? And he wore a sweatshirt one time that said, "Do as thou will." Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Right? I ain't gonna call no names. All right, mm-hmm. but he got that from Alistair Crowley, who was a known mm-hmm. Luciferian. You might have to drop that name. I'm trying all right, to bro. Talk about. Hey, I ain't gonna drop I ain't gonna drop the name. All right. But this is the type of this is what we're gonna read about what's going on in these times and why people feel like they can wear sweatshirts like that and they got the, the doctrine of Christianity, which is the same doctrine as the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, right? That tell them they can do what they want. Talk they about really sin. Talk about Christ died for you. That's ridiculous, mm. right? They don't understand what the, oh, and, and then uh, read that, and then we're going to get the whole duty of man. We're going to actually see what Yahweh requires, right? That's so right. Get, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 uh, from me, Shakar. And you go ahead and read that uh, real quick, Barbecue Shop. You wanted me to start from the top? Over time. Yeah. 
All right. This this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Right. For mm-hmm. men shall be lovers of their own selves. There you go. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. They want to do what they want to do. They don't want to listen. But let's hear what Yahweh, Akkad, right? Abba, what he told us to do, right? Get that Ecclesi- Ecclesiastes, not, not Sirach, Ecclesiastes, cuss. We want Ecclesiastes. Gotcha, y'all. Chapter 12 and verse 13, right? 12 and 13. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Right. Not to mention it's the most wise, one of the most wisest men to ever touch down, right? That's right. Let's hear let's hear some wisdom from a brother who's very wise. The brother very Solomon. Wise. That's why he got huh. a book called The Wisdom of Solomon, because he had plenty That's of right. that. Read on. That's right. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Right. Fear the living power. Fear your hour and keep his commandments and keep his commandments. No, do what you want to do and keep his commandments. Break all of the laws and keep his commandments. <laughs> all right. Love Esau and keep his commandments. <laughs> Listen <laughs> to what the Moabites and the Hamites tell you. Keep his commandments. No, we're going to keep Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah's commandments, right? That's the whole duty of man, right? That's right. All right. So we ain't done on Christianity. We're going to continue to tear down that false satanic doctrine, right, that our people are in. And we, we got to get them up out of that, man. And that's what we're about right. here at Fire of God, man. We're going to purify. Hey, so all praises to y'all by Shem Shai for allowing us to uh, bring this out uh, to the nation. Uh, we'll be back, uh, Lord willing. Uh, in the next two to three days uh, for the part two to finish this out, uh, finish talking about, again, what the gospel is, who it's for. We know what it is, right? It's the good news for Israel. We know what it's for. It's for the nation, right? But we're going to have a part two because we're going to analyze, uh, finish analyzing what how Christianity looks at the gospel, right? And how they're going off, right? And how they sold us uh, white supremacy, in the gods of Christianity, all right? Hey, so with that being said, again, hey, I'm going to give all praises right now to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, right? To the 12 tribes that scattered, we're going to say greetings. Hey, and to all of the Akim uh, and Akwaf out there, man, uh, who listening, we're going to say again, a hey, Shalom. 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 Kwam Yashorala. Kwam Yashorala. Kwam Yashorala. Kwam.